Water baptism be the 15th of December. That's what we're, we're making it. Go ahead and just take it up, Jeff. 15th of December. So if you haven't wrote your name down on a piece of paper, please put it on a please, piece of paper. Uh, the 15th of December, it's going to be in the morning service because we've got people that's out of this area, that lives quite distances away, that can't come to a lot of the water baptisms. Are you hearing me? Because we normally schedule it about 3 o'clock. So we're going to do it so- Sunday morning at 10.30, that's the 15th, hear me, so there'll be no excuses. Hello, bless the Lord, hallelujah, and we'll be doing some preaching as well before those be baptized, I believe we're going to have a great time in the Lord, and then following the service, look at me, we're going to have a fellowship supper in the name of the Lord, that'd be a good time for having a Thanksgiving supper and Christmas supper together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And somebody said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. So come on out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So put that on your calendar, December the 15th. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to have water baptism here. Bless the Lord. We've got several that's already signed up. and Some of the younger ones uh, need to get signed up. We've got some of them signed up. Bless the Lord. And I'm telling you what, we just thank God for those, hear me, that love Jesus. With all their heart, especially the young kids, in the name of the Lord. And if you've accepted Christ and you've never been water baptized, you need to get water baptized. Amen. And if you've been baptized for a period, or maybe you've been sprinkled, look at me. You need to get rebaptized if you're born again. That sprinkling meant nothing to you as a baby. Understand me, hallelujah. But once Christ comes into your heart and life, water baptism means a lot to you. Hear me. Bless the Lord, as, as uh, it typifies when you go down, you've died to self, died with Christ, and you come back up, you've resurrected a brand new person in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. That's symbolic. Water doesn't save you. Can I say that once again? Water doesn't save you because some say you've got to be saved and you've got to be baptized in water Hear me before you really are converted, but understand something, thief on the cross wasn't, and Jesus said today, you'll be with me in paradise in the name of the Lord. Praise God forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I've got an important message I want to bring forth to the body of Christ here to this morning. Hallelujah. I believe uh, it's been several years back now, and uh, I remember the storm that hit New Orleans. Remember the storm that hit New Orleans? What was that? It was Hurricane uh, Katrina. Katrina. Hurricane uh, Katrina down in New Orleans. And uh, the mayor of that city made this statement. He said, we will weather the storm. I remember him being on television and saying that. We'll weather the storm and we'll come back bigger and better. Hear me. Hallelujah. As I said, speaking about Hurricane Katrina. As I said, he, 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 he partially spoke a truth. It wasn't the storm, listen, that, that, that caused all the devastation. And I don't know how many people lost their lives in Katrina, and, and they're still building down there. Some of the homes are still devastated and what have you. And it, and it showed on, uh, on some of the newscasts and different things, so bodies literally floating on the water. Dead people floating around that they couldn't get to, you know, because there are so many that had been uh, uh, dead and bodies all bloated. And the stench was something, something else, uh, the way that the commentators and what have you was, was talking about. But there was such gre- uh, uh, devastation. How many know, as I said, it wasn't the storm that really destroyed New Orleans but it was the levee. It was the levee that broke. When the levee broke, hear me, understand something, New Orleans, if they wouldn't have those levees there, they'd be underwater. And uh, the only thing that, that causes New Orleans, hear me, to, to survive is that those pumps have got to continuously pump the water out. And hold the water back. And if those pumps quit, you're in trouble. Because the ocean's going to swallow up 
New Orleans. And that's exactly what had taken place, hear me, back, I don't know how many years ago, it's been several years back that uh, Katrina hit New Orleans. But it was the levee that broke that really caused the devastation. I've said that to say this, hallelujah, there's a great devastation in the modern church today. And I I believe the reason why there's a great devastation in modern modern church today, hear me, child of God, is that the levee has broken. Can I say that again? The levee has broken. Hear me. When the church's levee is broken, there's great devastation in the body of Christ. Spiritually speaking, great devastation. Some might be asking the question, well, Pastor, Mr. Martin, you're, you're speaking in parables. Now, I want to give you what the levy really is. Some might say, well, what is the church's levy? We ought to know what the church's levy is. Amen? As being Christians. But some don't know what the church's levy is. Look at 1 Corinthians, if you would please, 3, 11 through 12. And I come down here because I want to do a little bit of teaching and I want to do a little bit of preaching as well. Okay? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 12. I want us to read this together, if we would, please. And read it real slow, all right? Because a lot of times we can read through this, and it means nothing to you. You can read it like a, like a newspaper, but when I read God's Word, I read it through the eyes of the Spirit. I want to see what's, what He's talking about. And I start asking myself questions, you know, talking about the foundations. What's the foundation? You know, I... I I, I, I question everything in the Word of God. Hear me. Which brings me to more Scripture and more Scripture and more Scripture. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And how many know that Scripture interprets Scripture? Amen. Hallelujah. So it's vitally important to know what the Scripture says concerning certain situations. Well, today we're going to learn, hear me, it's not the storm that destroyed New Orleans, but the levee broke which destroyed New Orleans. Hear me. And I'm afraid in the modern church, the levee has broken and there's going to be great devastation, hear me, spiritually in the house of God. Now listen, hallelujah. Here's the levee right here. Let's read it together. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is... Now let's stop, think, and meditate on this a little bit. Hallelujah. There's no other other foundation that man can lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now look at me. It never said anything about Harvest Field. It never said anything about Pastor Martin. It never said anything in there, listen, about my church. Hear me. Because you see, some put confidence and trust, hear me, hallelujah, in their church in the preacher, in their denomination. Hear me. Understand something, child of God. All these are are prone to fault and failure. How many in here can put up both hands and say, I trust my government with all my heart? I don't think I can get one taker on that. How many in here can put up both hands and say, I I believe Obama cares the best thing that's ever hit, hit the face of the earth? May I present to you that's got nothing to do with the message, but I believe it's going to destroy America financially. And you know what? It's not by chance that this is going on. Hear me, child of God. It's been planned. That's why I say they want America to, to, to come down. The socialists do. And hear me, we're coming very close to that. Socialism. Hear me, folk. Devastation running to and fro. In, on the streets, uh, roving gangs and stuff. Some of, the, some of the things that's going on now, you would never think would ever take place 30 years ago. I was telling some of the guys when we was coming back from the football game, I said, make sure you got, you got your head turned around all the time. Make sure you're walking like this. And when you walk by a corner, make sure you look all the time. Why? You know why the biggest thing is? It's called knockout. These young guys, young punks, young kids, 
They'll watch an older person or a younger person as well. One of them will come up while you're walking down the street and sucker punch you in the back of the head as hard as they can sucker punch you. They've already killed four people. And knock the person out on the ground and just chuckle about it and go on. Folk, I thought throwing spit wads in school was bad. But I'm telling you what, there's been a spirit loosed in the United States of America that is nothing but filth, rot, and trash. It comes right directly from the very guts and pits of hell itself. And the reason why is there's no godly standard. The level has, or the levy has been broken. When you have no moral absolutes, we act like dogs and animals. Come on, church. You act like dogs and animals. Hear me. Bless God, if it just feels good, go ahead and do it. You're not held accountable for anything. And that's why they can run up behind you and smack you in the back of the head, hear me, and put you down on your knees. That's not just to, hear me, it's not just to rob you. They don't even rob you. It's just for entertainment. Entertainment causes. And it's happened in many cities, and it's just gone. It's on YouTube. You can see it on YouTube. And it's getting worldwide, I mean, uh, nationwide. I know one thing. Somebody sneaks up behind me and tries to poke me in the back of the head. We won't go there. We won't go there. Hear me. Understand something. I will protect myself. Some say, well, you need to turn the other cheeks. No common sense says you need to watch what's going on. Come on, church. Bless God forevermore and evermore. What good's it going to do you to turn the other cheek when you're laying in the grave? Bless God. But something has got to evolve in the church house to affect the White House. Oh, my God. Something's got to happen in the house of God to affect the schoolhouse. Glory. Something's got to happen in the the house of God to affect my house. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Come on, church. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. It cannot be mundane Christianity and some type of metal asset that we take in serving God. The levee's been broken and there's great devastation going on in the church house today. Hear me. And this church is an exempt from you see, everything that we do is made by choice. God forces himself on no person. God didn't force you to the altar. God didn't force you to serve him. Am I right? One of the biggest dangers to mankind as being a Christian is God gave us a will. And we are the deciding factor of what that will will be in our lives and direct our course of path. Hear me. But you see, God didn't want any people, any person serving Him because they have to serve Him. Am I right? But He wanted the people that loved Him and wants to serve Him. That, my friend, is a choice. We make a lot of choices in life today. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Hear me. The good brings about the blessing. The bad brings about the cursing. Hear me. I don't know about you, but I've made some stupid choices in my 64 years of life. Stupid. Somebody should have shot me with a stupid sticker when I'd done it. One of those is when I went out, I remember I went to uh, 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 St. Mary's Campground, and we had an old raggedy, I don't know what it was, a 64, 65 Chevy that I pulled a pop-up camper. And I told my wife, I said, you know what, it was on a Saturday, and I said, let's buzz up to old Paul Cherry's up there. And I said, let's look through, my, uh, through some of their vans. And some of them conversion vans, that, that was big time back then. Big time. I said, let's go look at some of those vans. And she said, no, nah, let's just stay here because 
All we did, you know, all I had to do is just try to tempt you or whatever. I said, we can't afford one anyhow. So I said, all we can do, it don't cost us nothing to, to uh, look. All right. Guess what I come back with? <laughs> A $400 payment for 700, 700 years. It seemed like oh 700 God. years. <laughs> for seven years at, a, at, about, at about probably, I don't know how many, what the interest rate was at, at that time. That, that car salesman wheeled and dealed me. Hear me? He had me stripped naked and I never even knew it. <laughs> Just that quick. Nothing against car salesmen. But understand something. He made promises and things sound so easy. And he said, all you got to do is sign your name on that. And I said, but hey, I said, man, I got a camper down in, in St. Mary's. And I said, I, if I get this, I said, I ain't even able to pull my camper back. Well, he said, you're going to find some way. I said, well... There's no problem. I won't get it anyhow. And he said, won't you jump in it and take a ride? I said, okay. I jumped in it. And can I tell you something? Worst thing you can ever do. <laughs> the smell. Mm. And the four kids. And a big back. And all I could do is see myself driving down Interstate 80 heading to California with the kids clear back here in the back. And believe me, we made several trips doing that, going out to our in-laws. But I said that I was wheeled and dealed, stripped clean, and I never even knew it. I went away happy. But after about a year, I went away sad. I thought, my Lord, what did I get myself into? But you know, out through all of that, that van became so useful because we used that van, hear me, to take our youth of the church when we lived in, when we had church in Scott, took them to every one of the youth groups. My wife was a youth leader at that time. And we literally ran the wheels off of that van and God literally blessed us because of using that van in the name of the Lord Jesus and can I tell you something even when I got rid of it hallelujah uh, I believe my brother-in-law Jack bought it from me and then he ended up giving it to a church and they used it for their youth and for their groups as well so we thank God for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ but can I tell you something I got suckered. And can I tell you, you hear me, there's many in church, the modern church today, listen to me, there is so much, uh, 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 so much false prophecy, so much false teaching that sounds so good that they can strip you and never know you're stripped. Hear me. And then after, after all the devastation, you say, man, I wish I'd have never, I wish I'd have never done that. What a stupid choice to sit under that type of teaching. Hello. Brother and sister, hear me. The levy has been broken. And there's great devastation going on in the house of God, even as we are speaking. I watched a program, when was it, last week, Billy Graham. Anybody watch his last message? They said, some say it was his last message to America. My wife got saved under Billy Graham's ministry. Got saved at the house. Hear me. And to watch that old man, 95 years old, somebody wheeling him out, hear me, on a, on a wheelchair, and hardly could talk, had a mic up to his mouth, and this is what he said. He said, America is in trouble. Great devastation 
is going on in America. America is in trouble. And he didn't stop there, but he said the church is in trouble. Are you hearing me? Folk, we just seen, can you put that back up on the, uh, 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 the, the scripture, Christian, uh, Christian, Christian, 1 Corinthians uh, 3, 11 and 12. Flip that back up on there because I didn't get finished with it. Hallelujah. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, he goes on to tell you, Paul tells you some things that, that people uh, lay the foundation on. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, let's read it. Gold, silver, precious stone. Sounds like prosperity message, don't it? Come to Jesus and get rich. You know what the Bible says? Come to Jesus and lose your life. Hear me. Now, I'm not against prosperity. Hear me, child of God. God will prosper those that he wants to prosper. Some of us couldn't handle prosperity. Some would say, if I just had a million bucks, man, this is what I would do. I'd build that school on for you, Pastor Martin. No, you wouldn't. I probably wouldn't even see it in church. You'd be gone. God knows our hearts. Amen? I said he knows our hearts. Hallelujah. But if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. Look at me. The levy is broken when, when preachers and teachers begin to minister upon this. We just seen the foundation is Jesus Christ. He's the source. Are you hearing me, child of God? And the cross of Christ is the means in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Glory to God. Now if any man built upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, in other words, the materialistic, everybody say materialistic. materialistic. One more time. When the foundation of the church, hear me, child of God, turns from Jesus Christ, and the purpose that he went to the cross, her levy is broken. And it opens up a gate, hear me, or a chasm for all types of filth to flood in to the house of God. Stop and think of this a second. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The levy is broken. Can I say it again? The levy is broken. Listen to what Psalms 11.3 says. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? As I said, Billy Graham said, America's in trouble. The church is in trouble. Hallelujah. The title of his message was, The Cross. Can everybody say that? The Cross. A 95-year-old man that won hundreds and thousands if not millions to the Lord Jesus Christ in his last ministry on the face of the earth is saying, Church, America, get back to preaching the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Then you'll see a turnaround in Jesus' name. Praise God. And I put on my notes, get Get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back to preaching the cross of Jesus. I wanted that driven into my spirit in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And brothers and sisters, listen to me. I was in the U.S. Navy. And hear me. Hallelujah. We had what they called morning lines. When we come up to tie up to the pier, you had morning lines. And those morning lines, listen, they was that big. Manila rope, that big. And they'd put them around bullhorns to tie the ship fast. To the, to the, uh, to the dock. If it wouldn't be for that rope, if it wouldn't be for the bullhorns, hear me, you'd go adrift. Can I tell you something? Hear me. The cross is those bullhorns and the cross is that rope. When those ropes are breached, look at me. The ship goes adrift. 
And that's what has happened in the modern day church. They don't know right from wrong. Because right hasn't been preached. And we're coming into a generation of the church that calls right wrong and wrong right. If you preach the truth, they'll call you a legalist. Hello. You preach the cross, they'll call you a legalist. Hear me, child of God. Whatever they call you, it makes no difference. I would to God that every preacher, every teacher would read the book of Ezekiel and say, Son of man, you're a watchman to watch over my house. And if you don't warn the people of the coming judgment and warn the people about the sin that they're committing, those people will die in their sins, but their blood will be required at your hand. One of the prophets said, they are dumb dogs. They don't know how to bark. What do you use a watchdog for? What's the sense of having a watchdog if all you do is let the, let the thief come in and never bark and give you a warning? I got to put a bark collar or shock collar on my little sausage hound and, to keep her from barking. And then she, she goes like this. Which she'll be, if you don't put one on her, she'll go. Raw, 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 raw. She's a yapper. But once uh, that little shock collar's on there, hear me. It'll give her a little tickle. And she knows that if she raises her voice, she gets tickled. So you know what she'll do? If she hears a car door slam, she'll go, under her breath. And even if she don't have it on, I'll scold her and say, shut up. And she's got to get the last word in. She'll go, I might be quiet, but I'm not quiet in my heart. But one of the prophets said they are dumb dogs and don't know how to bark in the house of God. My God, God is raising up, listen, some watch people, watchmen that will stand on the platform, hear me, and warn the body of Christ. Amen. My Lord, child of God, hear me. Because if not, devastation will take place spiritually. If I don't warn the body of Christ of what's happening Nowadays in the modern church, look at me. The blood of those people are upon my hand. But if I warn them, look at me, and then they just neglect it, look at me, they'll be lost in their way, but their blood will not be upon this preacher's hands. I'm concerned for every family in this church. God didn't place me as a watchman over the world but he placed me as a watchman for this people, the under-shepherd of this church. And brother, any time I don't warn the body of Christ means I don't love you. Hear me. It means I don't love you. If, if all you want me to do is tickle your ear and make you feel good, look at me, I could do that if I wanted to. All I'd have to do is preach one of those messages of wood, hay, stubble, silver, gold, whatever. Look at me. I was caught up in that stuff. So don't point a finger at me and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do know what I'm talking about. Believe me. And can I tell you something? It was nothing but junk. It took me away from the purpose. The great purpose and the great commission, hear me, child of God, hallelujah, is to win as many as what we can possibly win and bring to the cross of Jesus Christ. And when people forget that commission, when a church forgets that commission, look at me, they became a Laodicean church. You know what a Laodicean church is? It's the last day in time church. We've got plenty of money. We've got our fancy church. We've got, you know... Plenty of uh, uh, people, bless the Lord, were happy, hallelujah, bless the Lord. There was a do-nothing church, just set, come, and just be entertained, hear me. And the Lord surveyed the church and said, you know what? You say you are rich, but I say you're miserable. You're naked, you're blind. 
I pray to God that you buy ISAB that you might see your spiritual condition. And if you don't, look at me. He said, I'm going to come and put your light out. I'll put my, I'll take the spirit out of that house. All you have is nothing but a social club with a bunch of games and a bunch of people coming together, hear me, patting each other on the back and say, oh, happy days. And some can remember back of the old past and say, my God, remember the genuine move of the Spirit of the Lord where people's hearts literally wept in their seats. Their hearts was broken and they'd, they'd bow before their seats and cry out to God in heartfelt fervent prayer. And you know why? Because they sought the face of God back then. Hear me. The levy has been breached. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1, 17 through 24. Read with me if you would, please. Now, how many know Paul wrote two-thirds of this, the New Testament? Vitally important. Can I tell you something? Some of the, the modern-day preachers say that Paul wasn't even an apostle nowadays. So we might as well throw two-thirds of this Bible out the window. Now, how can people set that under that type of teaching with not being affected? Paul was given the great revelation of the cross of Jesus Christ, folk. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Listen to what he said. For Christ sent me not to what? Baptize, but to preach the gospel. Everybody say preach. What's the method? Preach. That's still, listen, in the method today. Preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words. Now listen to this real closely. Not with wisdom of words. Read. Lest the cross of Christ should be, what? Made of none effect. Which tells me very plainly, hear me, that the cross has great effect when it's preached. Not with the wisdom of of mankind, but by the Spirit of God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Some would say, well, why do you get so excited? Because, hear me, I know what we're talking about. I know what the Lord wants in the body of Christ. Not only just this body, but His whole body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 2, 1 and 2, he goes on and listen to what he says. He says this in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 and 2, And I, brethren, come on, read with me, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Now listen to what he says, read, For I determined not to know anything save Jesus Christ, and him what? Crucified. Don't you think that ought to be the message today? How is sinners going to get saved lest they know they're a sinner? The message today has been, or the message, hear me, child of God, of Christ and him crucified has been breached and overcome with a message of materialistic and entertainment in the house of the Lord. Paul says, I determined not to know anything save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Paul did not depend upon oratorial, hear me, abilities that he had. And understand me, he could have, he could have probably spellbound people if he wanted to. Paul wasn't, you know, he wasn't no uneducated man. He went to, what was it? He was, he was a, a Pharisee of Pharisees uh, went to a, a well-trained college to be a Pharisee at that time under Gamiel, I believe that's who it was. He could have spellbound his audience, but he said, you know what, I didn't come to use uh, fancy speech to tickle your ears. 
But he says, I come in power and demonstration of the Spirit of God Almighty. Ought not the Spirit of God be moving through the house of God today? Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? The Spirit of God does not move upon entertainment. He moves upon the hearts of people that are hungry for God Almighty and God shows up and fills their hungry soul in the name of Jesus. I don't want something that's just going to tickle my flesh and that's just going to be temporal. I want something that's going to be eternal and pay eternal benefits inside of me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I've been saved over 30 some years, hear me. And I've seen a lot of fads in the house of God, a lot of fads in the church. Hear me. I've seen the fad of being slain in the spirit. And you know what? Some of these are partial truths because I've seen people slain in the spirit here. But you see what it, back then it became a doctrine. And if you wasn't slayed in the spirit and you didn't have 20, 25 people corded up like cordwood up around the altars, you didn't have a service. It was dead. And I also do know one thing. There's such a thing as called power of suggestion. And I do also know another thing. Hear me. Hear me. There's another Jesus and another gospel and another spirit. Paul talked about that in Galatians. Don't you think the devil can entertain people if they want to be entertained? Hear me. I've seen him come from, the, from, from being slayed in the spirit. I've seen him come through uh, the laughing phenomena, through Howard Brown Ministries, whatever it was, when he's preaching the message and everybody in the church is going, ha, 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 ha. I don't know how anybody get anything out of that. Nothing but distraction. And you know what? It was a spirit doing it, but it wasn't a spirit of God because it don't coincide with the Word of God. Amen. Now understand something. I've had a spirit of laughter on me before. But it don't happen all the time, honey. Matter of fact, I hadn't had that for many, many, many moons. But there is such a thing as a spirit of laughter. Hear me. But what the devil would do is jump on that like a, like a rocking horse and rock it all the time that it becomes a doctrine in the house of God and people just start laughing all over. Which causes mass confusion, hear me, and overrides the Word of God that's being presented. Now if you've got any intelligence in the Word of God, you know the Spirit, listen, doesn't override the Word. Hello. He always coincides with the word. Hear me, folk. We went from that to puking in bags. Pardon expression. The Christian was demon possessed. What's wrong with you is that you're demon possessed. That was a phenomenon back then. And what we need to do is cast the spirits out of you because you're demon possessed. And we got our old bags here where you can just go ahead and and vomit in these bags. I've seen it all. Hear me. How many know some of that is partially true? But a lot of it is phony. You know what? How do you know it's phony? Because it never, it never existed. It faded away. If it, if it was reality, it'd still be going on right now. Hear me, folk. We went from puking in bags to, to uh, 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 blab it and grab it. You was afraid to talk. Afraid that if I said something wrong, I was on the wrong side of God. I've seen a lot over the years of the fads that church assemblies go through. But can I tell you something? For hundreds of years, for those that have preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, under the cross, it has never changed 
it stays the same. It is not a fad. It is not a myth. It is the precious blood of the Son of God and it's the Holy Spirit that will back, hallelujah, the finished work of the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? (laughs) Hallelujah. Paul says, I didn't come with enticing words of man's wisdom but in power and demonstration, nor did he use philosophy. But he just used the preaching of the simplicity of the cross. You stop and think for a second, much of what is being preached today is philosophy. Some would say, my Lord, what in the world is philosophy? It's a logical study of the nature and source of human knowledge, our human values, our human mind, called humanistic psychology. Come on, folks. Much as what you're hearing behind the pulpits today is humanistic psychology. Psychology 101. I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, cause you to get a book and read it. But much of the young pastors, they are required to take a course in psychology today. And the cross is being booted completely out the house. Casey, you had a degree in psychology, yeah, didn't you? I did, yeah. Went to I school for it. From that. But you know what it is? And, it, and it's in the body of Christ. Your 12-step programs. Come on, people. Let's just get ourselves in a little circle, be held accountable to one another, and let's just confess our faults one to another. You know what AA does that? Let's bring out the good in you. Come on. Don't that come from the pulpits today? The best you today? Can I tell you something? Yous isn't even supposed to be living. I am crucified with Christ. It's not I that lives, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Can I tell you something? What the church needs is self-esteem. That's what they say. It needs that self-esteem. Can I tell you something? When somebody comes to Christ Jesus and invites Him into their heart and into their life, the Bible says, Behold, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You now have the mind of Christ. If you want self-esteem you go for it but I want his esteem in my heart and in my life hallelujah to the lamb which can make me very confident very productive in this life hear me don't get me wrong there's a lot of kids that have low self-esteem for some of the things that they have went through but hear me child of God many of them They put on all different types of medications where they're not even a human being hardly. Look out. But hear me, child of God. Has the cross lost its power? Has Jesus lost his attractiveness in the house of God? Did not look... Now understand something. The word world's got to have something to lean to. They've got to have some place to go to. But you and I have got the great high physician to go to in the name of the Lord. I'm looking at people in here that used to be alcoholics, drug addicts, hear me, bouncing off rubber rooms, and Christ has liberated and set you free, and whom He set free is free indeed simply by preaching the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hear me. I had uh, back, I know what I'm talking about because back several years ago, and many of you know, I I had uh, an attack from the enemy that I've never had before in my, my, my whole life. I couldn't sleep at night, and when you're sleep deprived, Hear me, it'll drive you up a wall. 
You think, well, maybe just one night ain't bad. You know, you just lay there and let things go through your mind. You get up the next day and you're, you know, you, you feel pretty good. But then the next night you don't have no sleep again. And you get up, you ain't nothing but a crab. And the next night you go to bed and you say, well, I wonder if this is going to be like it was the other night. And then it becomes a psych job. Up here, there's a fight going on right here. And you keep hearing that and hearing that. And you know what? Next thing you know, the devil jumps in with anxiety. The doctor said, I went to the doctor. The doctor said, well, you got anxiety. I said, get away from me. I don't have no anxiety. But I mean, no, I was in denial. I can look back and see that I was. Because before I would go to bed, I was thinking all the time. I was anxious and my heart was just... How many know if your heart's... You ain't going to sleep. You might as well go out and play uh, uh, some type of games or whatever. And it become a psych job. And I'm telling you what, hear me, all hell literally would break loose when it come dark. It just seemed like the daylight was all right, but as soon as it got dark, look at me. The devil likes to do his, his bidding. And I realized then that I was in a spiritual war. A spiritual war for my mind and for the ministry and for my family. I knew right then that the devil was trying to take me down and destroy me. And I remember saying this to my wife one night. I was, I, I, I mean, I was just at my, the end of my ropes. I've done everything. I praised God. I said, God, you know my heart. And I told my wife, I said, honey, take me to the hospital and throw me in the nut house. I'm serious. I'm serious as I'm standing here. I said, I'm losing my mind. My mind's gone. I said, I got to have help. And she said, do you really want to do that? And I said, I'll do anything to get relief of what's going on inside of me. I had the church praying. I had the church interceding. And one of the, one of the worst things a person can do is keep things to their self. And I would stand before the congregation and say, congregation, I need you to pray for me because I couldn't pray for myself. And the congregation stood in the gap and interceded. And I can remember to this day, the doctor told me, he said, you know, uh, Pastor Martin, he said, I want you to stay preaching. But he said, I want you to go on this drug. And he said, please don't worry about it because... Many of the movie stars and speakers and many of the preachers use it to preach, to, to preach because they get anxious and anxiety comes up and, and this drug will make you real calm. That's the same type of drug that killed a lot of people. Hear me. And understand something. I don't even like to take aspirins. I'm not, a drug per- I, I'm not a drug person, hear me. Even though I did drugs when I was young, but I still wasn't a drug person back then. Anything that alters my mind, I don't like that. Am I speaking down on somebody that might be on some type of medication? No, I'm not speaking down. Some need to be on that, hear me. Otherwise, they would go off their, off their rocker. But understand me. I was at the point of of resigning ministry because I couldn't think straight, even though I'd get behind the pulpit and when I would preach, the anointing would come on me and I was just like normal, like nothing was going on. I was never so humbled by the power of God in all my life. And knowing spiritual darkness like I've, like I've never known before. I've been there. I know people that go do, through depression, and I know people that go through oppression. And tell, let me tell you something. 
it is not fun. Not fun at all. And I'd lay up at night, all night long, listen to godly tapes, godly music, everything. The doctor says, don't watch no TV in, 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 in your bedroom. Uh, turn off all the lights, do this, that, and the other. You know what, I did that and still nothing. And of course, my doctor, he said, then said, you know, I want you on this pill. And uh, I got to looking at it and started reading some of the side effects and different things. And he said, you know, you can, once you take it, you know, it's a good possibility you never get off of it. I made the decision then. I said, God, either you're a healer or you're a phony, one of the two. Now, understand, hear me. Please hear me. This is me. I'm not talking about you. Hear me. And you can't say, well, you know, Pastor Martin did this, so I'm going, no, 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 no. Don't you do that. But this is what the Lord spoke to my heart personally. He said, I'll, I'll touch you and I'll heal you. And I thought, well, I'm going to be healed right then. I wish he'd have said right then, but he didn't. He let it go on a little further. And he said, uh, the doctor said, you know, Terry, he said, this is what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to want to put you in a sleep tank and just see how much sleep you're getting. So they put me up the Van Wert, went in there, sleep tank, and they hooked you up with all different types of lines, you know, on your eyes and temples and all. I mean, just wired up. You, you just look like a, a, a like a, a, a fishing rod that had an open face, you know, when you got a backlash in that and it looks like a bird's nest in it. That's how many lines I'd hooked on me. And then they had a movie camera right above me. And then they turned the lights off and said, we want you to go to sleep. <coughs> and I looked at that woman and I started laughing. I said, you've got to be joking. And she said, no. I said, how in the world am I going to sleep? You can't even roll over. I said, what do you got to do if you go to the bathroom? Well, she said, just call me because we're watching you and we'll, we'll let you know. I said, okay. So I laid there and I was going like this and the lights was out. Closed my eyes, and I'd go to the bathroom. <laughs> Anxiety. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Some of you know what, you, what I mean because you've been there. And I said, ma'am, are you there? And I didn't hear anything. I said, ma'am, are you there? Yes, Terry, we're right here. I said, i got to go to the bathroom. We'll be right in. You see, I didn't want nobody leaving me. I wanted them right by me, Jeff. It just seemed like there was comfort if somebody was in the room with me. She would come in, and I did have to go to the bathroom. She unhooked all those wires, took me over to the bathroom, hooked me back up, went back over again. What, an hour later, and I said, Ma'am, are you still there? Yes, Mr. Martin, I'm here. Man, I hate to bother you, but I've got to go to the bathroom again. Okay, we'll be right in. Well, that went on. Are you hearing me? And they said, well, you didn't hardly get no sleep at all. I said, I know I didn't. So you know what they said? Here's what the doctor said. The doctor said, you know, here's what I want you to do. We've set you an appointment up over in Lima to one of the greatest psychiatrists around. And he'll talk to you and and he'll speak to you, and he'll let you down real, like a feather floating down. He'd been very successful for a lot of people. We'll make that appointment for you. I said, go ahead and make that appointment. And they made that appointment. I remember that night. I was in my bedroom, and I said this. I said, God... Your Bible says that you're a healer. And I said, you know my heart. That whether I come out of this or not, I'm still going to serve you. I'm not giving up and I'm not backing up. Can I tell you something? From that time forward, the great physician stepped in on the scene and looked at me. I'm here today in soundness of mind. In the name of Jesus.
Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Brother, hear me. There's still power in the cross of Jesus Christ. And sister, there's still power in the cross of Jesus Christ. Why did the Lord allow me to go through those things? I believe, number one, to show me humility towards people that are going through those. Humbleness of heart. To be able to minister to those that are going through that very, very, very circumstance in the name of the Lord Jesus. That there is hope in the darkness of your night. That there is hope there and that light will come forth and break out in all areas of your life in the name of Jesus. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, we've, we, we've turned the preaching of the cross over to man's philosophies, man's programs, hear me, and man's plans. Understand something. God does not anoint plans. Period. He don't anoint plans. He don't anoint a program. You know what he anoints? People. God anoints you. God anoints me. Hear me. And when some man tries to institute his program or his 12-point step, whatever it might be, hear me, and tie in just a little bit of Jesus, look at me. All they're doing is using humanistic psychology upon you. Stop and think of this. Now, this goes over YouTube, and many have been seeing it on YouTube as well. I say to the preachers, teachers, and evangelists, get back to preaching the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want to tell you something. God wants to break out on the left and on the right in the name of the Lord Jesus and nothing but the power of God. Hear me, flowing in and through His church. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. So you got humanistic psychology that has invaded the house of God. You've got motivational speakers. Just like that car salesman that literally stripped me and I never knew I was stripped. And boy, I felt good being stripped. Anybody ever been, been that way? I felt good. And can I tell you something? There's a lot of preachers out there to make you feel good. Because they know how to hit the tickle button on you. All they got to do is hit something that's materialistic. Something that you like. And start preaching on that. You've got new age that has entered the house of God. We are God's ourself. We can speak things into existence if we want to. Hear me. Folk, I'm not through with this message, but there's so much more to it. The reason why the cross isn't preached, now hear me real close, is because it, 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 demands and I'm going to emphasize demands it demands crucifixion to self selfishness and self promotion you know what that means a lot of the modern day preachers got to get, throw their books out the window that's filling their pocketbooks if I preach the cross now, I'm not harping just on preachers, but we can use that as lay people as well. Some people don't want to give up. They're materialistic because the cross demands crucifixion to self. Jesus said, I didn't come to do my own will. I come to do the will of my Father. Lord, hallelujah, in the garden, this is too much for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done in my heart and in my life. Our will is very dangerous. We can will to do what we want to do, or we can will to do what God wants to do in us. Hallelujah. And it all starts with the cross of Calvary. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, can I tell you something? Your salvation came through at the cross. Hear me. Hallelujah. Understand something. 
people don't like to hear crucifixion to self because many of us are selfish people. Stop and think a second what your prayers consist of. Is it praying for lost humanity? Is it praying for your brothers and sisters in the Lord? Is it praying, God, me, 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 me? And you can see where the heart lies. Hear me. The modern day church likes to preach nothing but to make people feel pleasant and happy in their sin. Stop and think of this. I call it the adjustable cross. Can I say that again? The title of this message is the adjustable cross. A couple things that I want to, want to give to you and then we'll close. promise you. What is the adjustable cross? Too many adjust the cross to their agendas. Should it not be we adjust our schedule around the cross? If it's convenient for me, I'll pray. If it's convenient, I might find time for the word. If it's not convenient for me, I don't want nothing to do with it. In other words, I want a costless Christianity. I want salvation without repentance. That's been preached. I want sanctification without chastening. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're shouting. I want God's blessings without obedience. I want a Savior without being Lord. That sound good? I want His presence without spending time with Him. Hello. I want to be a part of His body without commitment. And the list goes on and on and on. We call it the adjustable cross. We can adjust the cross to fit our agenda. You know what? I don't want my agenda. I want His agenda in my heart and in my life. There's still power in the cross of Calvary. And there's still power in the preaching of the cross of Calvary in the name of the Lord. Now hear me. When I talk about preaching the cross, I'm not talking about a wooden gibbet or wooden beam that we're talking about that some people put around their neck. You might as well put a rabbit's foot around your neck. We're not worshiping that, that cross. Remember, what, remember when, uh, when the Lord told Moses, he said, I want you to put a, a pole up, and then I want you to put a serpent on that pole. And when they look at that pole, it represented the cross. When they look at that, that pole, everybody would be healed from snake, snake bite. Well, on down along the line, I forget which one of the, one of the prophets or, uh, was uh, offhand, but the people started worshiping the pole instead of God. And you know what he did? He ground it to pieces, threw it away. I'm not talking about worshiping some wooden gibbet. I'm talking about the one that hung on the gibbet and what he did there, hear me, 2,000 years ago. That's what I'm talking about. But you see, preachers don't like to preach this same Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the name of the Lord. Look at me. He don't change. People change. Hear me, generations change, but the Word of God never changes. It's always the same. You want to build a church? Lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. You want people saved? Lift up Jesus. You want people baptized in the Holy Spirit? Lift up Jesus. You want people healed? Lift up Jesus. Hear me. We want signs, we want miracles, let's lift up Jesus in the name of the Lord God. Look at me. The cross demands crucifixion to self. Hallelujah. 
Jesus, here's where Jesus lost his people. He had thousands following him. He says, if you love your mom or dad or brother, sister, son or daughter, more than you love me, you're not worthy of me. And from that time forward, they all left him. That's a hard saying. Was he being unjust? No. He wasn't being unjust. Hear me. Hallelujah. One of the first commands is, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, everything within you. Does that mean we hate our, our parents? We hate our, our, our children? No. But folk, hear me. Our love has to be set like a flint toward Christ. Well, I don't know if I can do that. Well, you're not fit for the kingdom. You're not fit for the kingdom. I didn't say that, but God said that. Hallelujah. So it shows me how far short we are from the kingdom of God. I remember one person say this, what just to give you a little example, where their kids literally became a, a, a stumbling stone to them in their, in their worship to the Lord. They said, Mom and Dad, all you guys do is go to church. There's more to, more to life than going to church. And they like the line dancing thing. You know, the, don't break my heart, my achy breaky heart. Remember that? They said, come on, let's come on out with us and let's go to some of these, these uh, dances and stuff. So that's what they did. They went out and did that. At one time, all they talked about was the Lord. That's all they wanted was nothing but Jesus. They themselves got mixed up in a band. His wife got mixed up with another man in the band. They got divorced, <laughs> separated apart. All because their kids said, Mom, there's more to life than going to church. Hello. Brother, you might be entertained for a season. Hear me. But I'd much rather bear a cross and receive the glory of God and hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into everlasting joy and peace. Line dancing might only last for a season. And then they'll come out with something different. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But Christ will last forever. Why did Jesus say, why call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things I tell you to do? Why did he say, lest you eat my blood and drink my flesh, you have no part in my kingdom? Man. I'm telling you, the cross demands crucifixion to sell folk. Hear me. It ain't Lulu, skip to my Lou. I can do anything I want to do. <laughs> I can make a song out of that. Uh-uh. Look at me. We might say, well, tomorrow I'm going to do this. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. Look at me. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to God. You're God's property. Don't you understand that once we get saved, look at me, it's, we belong to Him. Well, I'm going to go out and do this, and I'm going to go out and do that. You better ask permission from God. What if you went out in your car, look at me in this cold weather, and that car said, I ain't going to church today, it's too cold out. What would you do? Would you kick it in the side? What would you do? But you see, you know, that, that might be, be facetious, but understand something. Vice versa, that's what we do a lot of times as Christians. Hallelujah, thinking that, well, you know, my approval is God's approval. No, God's approval, hear me, should be our approval. Bless God. Everything centered around the Lord. Some would say, man... If I got to do that, God's a killjoy. No, he isn't. God wants us to have life and life more abundantly here on the face of the earth. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying my Christian walk here on the face of the earth. I like to hunt. I'm going to go hunting next month or next week. Hear me. I like to hunt. I enjoy those things. Can I tell you something? But those pleasures don't take the, the joy of the Lord away from me. I like the 
things of this life. But these things of this life doesn't have such a hold on me that I bec- they become idolized and I start worshiping them. Does it make sense? What we're talking about this morning? Hallelujah. I love my wife dearly, but I don't idolize my wife. Hear me? I lay my life down for my wife, but can I tell you something? My love for my Lord is stronger than my love for my wife is. And she would say the very same thing. Matter of fact, what makes us our love together is both of us love the Lord with all of our hearts, and that, that ties our hearts together. Praise God. I told you I was going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Bless the Lord. But I've got a lot to say. I don't know about you, but a preacher that don't have a lot to say, I don't know. Something's wrong. Because if the preacher's in you, you just got to let it out. Amen? Amen. And I didn't come here for a pep talk. I didn't come here to please my flesh. I come here to crucify, crucify my flesh. And when I talk, hear me, I'm not talking just about you. I'm talking about myself. Because I can get caught up in these things as well. Hear me? I'm not exempt from those things. But we've got to look daily to the cross where we're crucified with Christ. And it's not me living any longer. It's Christ living in me. The Lord says, don't say tomorrow I'm going to do this and tomorrow I'm going to do that because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow might be your last day on the face of the earth. Then what? We face our king. And I want to face him as being my Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Make sense? Did I make anybody mad here this morning? I don't believe so. Bless the Lord. But we got an education. We've got an education. Bless God. Hallelujah. And this, this service is not meant to make you jump, shout, and put goosebumps on you. But it puts the rubber to the road. And we examine ourselves to see where we are in the faith of the living God. I was telling one of the brothers, you know, I I was talking to him, I don't know, the other night, I don't know who it was, forget now, but the question that the Lord asked Adam, remember when Adam was in sin? When they committed sin, they had sweet fellowship with the Lord. Said in the cool of the evening, they'd come down, they'd have church together. One day Adam didn't show up at church. And you know what the Lord spoke to him? What did he say to him? Adam, where are you? And can I tell you something? That word is still valid today, and I can say this, Terry, where are you spiritually? Where are you spiritually? You can say to yourself, Bill, Bob, Sue, whoever, Where am I spiritually? Am I deeper in the Lord now than what I was when I first accepted Him? Where am I spiritually? Hallelujah. Only you can answer that question. But I say this, I need all the help I can possibly get from God. And I say, Lord... Hallelujah. I can't live this life on my own. I've got to have the Holy Spirit living this thing through me. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, stand your feet and let's give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Come on, bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. How many in here can say, man, you know what? I need some work in my life. Let me see your hand. I'm not here to embarrass anybody. I need some work in my life. And there is some things that, that has crept in and have really taken the things of God out of me. Folk, look at me. Red flags go up and they speak to our hearts and say, man, turn around. Don't go the direction that you're going because if you keep going, you're go- the, the levee's going to be breached. It's going to be broken and there's going to be great devastation spiritually. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I don't survey anybody's life in here. That's something that you've got to do between you and God. With every head bowed, every eye closed, there might be somebody here this morning. One, two, three, I don't know. That has never made Jesus the Lord of their life. Never accepted Christ into their heart. But if you're here this morning and you'd like to do that, you know, I want you to 
serve God. I once used to be red hot, on fire for God, but now I've, I've kind of cast that aside. But I want back. I want what I used to be. You might be here and never had Christ as Lord and Savior, but today is your day. If you're here this morning and I'm speaking to you, won't you just lift up your hand? We'd love to pray with you. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody here? Praise God. If not, look at me. We're going to close. How many is thankful? You're glad you're a Christian. Bless the Lord. And I don't know about you, but God's going to come back for us. A red hot on fire Christian for God Almighty. And everybody said, get fired up, Harvest Field. Jesus is coming. Amen. Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jeff, close us in prayer. Would you, brother? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, it has been good to be in your presence this morning. Thank you for your people, Lord, has come out expecting from you, Lord. And, Lord, you never disappoint us. And we just ask, Lord, that this word has been brought forth, Lord, that it just becomes a very part of us. And, Lord, as we feed off of it through this week, Lord, that it can be fruit unto other people's lives, Lord, that maybe we can lead them to salvation, Lord, to bring them to the cross, Lord, where they may find you. We just ask for a blessing upon your people as they go forth tonight, today. Bring them back tonight, Lord, to receive more of your word. And Lord, once again, let us be a blessing unto you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.